have any idea how many decisions an average person makes in a day? I, I looked it up. Uh, we, I'm oh, sorry, I won't say what I was going to say. Um, it wasn't in my notes, and sometimes I say things that aren't in my notes. Well, I, I, um, I'll go ahead and say it anyway. So, um, <laughs> and saying no. When I, it's just funny sometimes with, um, you know, now with us having grandbabies, and, um, you know, I, I've said to our, our boys, I haven't said to the daughters-in-laws, because that's not my place, I don't think, but I said to our sons, you know, your mom's an expert at these things. You know, she's an expert. And, and uh, sometimes the, their significant others will say, but I read it on the internet. You know, I read, it's like, okay, but, um, um, but I looked up on the internet. So there, you know, for what it's worth, uh, several sites on the internet said that the average person makes about 35,000 decisions a day, right? You know, and then there was another one said probably about 500 and another one said about 5,000 and kids probably make about 3,000 decisions a day. And one site said that there are, um, the average person makes 773,618 decisions in a lifetime and will come to regret 143,262 of them. Again, where, where these numbers come from, I don't know. And then some sites differentiated between, they said you have to make a difference between choices and decisions. I mean, you know, pretty much the same thing. So I, I don't know. And then many of the sites acknowledge we really don't know how many decisions, you know, the average person makes in a day. Um, some, you know, make a lot more probably than others. I remember my, my cousin Brad, he, uh, some years ago, he got a new job and I was talking to him and it wasn't like I talked to him every day and he, he said, Clint, this is like overwhelming. He said, I have about 100 emails a day that I have to make decisions. And he said, we're not talking like about $100 decisions. He said, there's a lot of money involved. And I, have, I just you know, keep answering emails. And I'm, I'm the guy that's making these decisions. And, and so we know, we all know we have a lot of decisions in life. The, the most important decisions are about what? Any, anybody? Family. Family, Tiff said? Money, is that what you said? Money, health, family. What you gonna have for dinner? What you gonna, what you gonna have for dinner? To some people, that's really important. Um, I had a very nice birthday meal yesterday, and and so um, they, you know, some is if you're gonna marry or who you marry, and maybe a home, uh, where where you're gonna live, and what house you're gonna get, or a career, um, if you're gonna have children or not have children. Um, our spiritual lives. There are a lot of, lot of big decisions in life, and we know a lot of small decisions as well. Um, the wise men, if we think about the story of the wise men, it's recorded in Matthew chapter 2, we can look at the decisions they made. We're not going to read it. I think most of us are familiar with that story, but just the story in that of, of the wise men, the decisions they made. They decided to leave their home, to leave their country, and to follow the star. They decided to continue to follow the star because it wasn't a short journey. They decided to ask for directions or to ask for help. When they came to Jerusalem, they, they sought advice. They met secretly with Herod or he met secretly with them. They decided to continue. When they found Jesus, they chose, they decided to worship Jesus and they decided to give gifts to him and then they also decided to defy the king who told them to make sure and tell me when you find the baby. They decided to defy, defy the king and return to their country by a different way. Jesus said that he is the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. For us and our decisions, you know, some, as we know, are, are more important than others. But our decision regarding Jesus is truly the most important decision we'll ever make. We're just saying, I'll stand, you know, my heart abandoned, that um, all, giving all to Jesus. Some of the old hymns say, you know, I surrender all. <laughs> it's, not, it's not some or it's not most, it's I surrender all. That's the most important decision we'll ever make. 
to follow Jesus, to continue to follow Jesus, to put God first in our lives and not people like the wise men did. They defied the king because God, an angel, told them not to go back that way. We decide to worship, and like the wise men gave gifts, we have many different gifts that we can give. You know, the gifts of our, an easy way to think about it is our time, our talents, and, and our, our treasure. And, and then sometimes to return another way, to go a different way. On this first Sunday of the new year, for many of us, it can be that, you know, when we have a new year, we, we, look, at, we look at the old and then we look forward in the new. And, and sometimes it means that we'll take a new direction, go a different way. Jesus said to his followers, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. That's a pretty heavy <laughs> request. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. It's, a, it's such a big decision, the most important decision we'll ever make. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? For what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? The most important, Jesus is saying, this is what's most important. It is our soul, it's our spirit, it's our, our life in the Lord. In Joshua, God spoke through Joshua, you know, several thousand years ago. And, and I think this choice still lays before us today. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We know there are a lot of other gods in our culture today. There's, there are a lot of other gods in our society today. Will we... Choose Jesus first. Will we put Jesus first in our lives? At the end of the service today, we're going to sing a, a hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. And um, if it's in the bulletin. If you want to look at the words, it's on an insert in the bulletin. But this, this hymn is roughly around 150 years old. And it comes from India. And actually, in the late 1800s, there was a great revival in England and, and um, in that area. And a lot of missionaries went out. A lot of missionaries from Europe went out. And in northeast India, it was a particularly um, rough place for missionaries to go. There were a lot of headhunters there. And it was just very difficult. And, and um, a, a number of missionaries lost their lives. And a missionary went to one particular place and a family finally uh, uh, came to know the Lord, were converted and accepted Christ. And a number of other people in this, this tribal group accepted Christ as well, but the chief was very upset about it, and, and, and tradition tells us that he called this man, and he said, if you recant your faith, if you denounce Christ, then you'll be all right, and if not, basically something really bad is going to happen to you and your family. And... Um, Tradition tells us that this man said the first line of this song, just kind of spontaneously, I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. And something really bad did happen to his, his kids, and then he was asked to give him another chance to recant, and he said, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. And something really bad happened to his wife. And then uh, they gave him one more final chance. And he said, though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow, no turning back. And then something really bad happened to him. And after he was martyred, the chief that ordered uh, this to all happen basically couldn't believe the faith of someone. Why would this person 
to be willing to lay down their life for uh, a man who lived in a faraway country, you know, almost 2,000 years ago. And he came to know the Lord, and then the, the, really the entire village came to know Jesus as their Savior, and there was a, a great revival there. Later, it's, as, as it says at the top on this song, if you look at the insert, the melody is a folk melody from India. Again, this, this song came from Northeast India, and sometime after that happened, someone added the fourth verse, will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus is a, a simple way of really summarizing the, the covenant communion prayer that we pray together every, every first Sunday of the new year. It's found in our hymnal on page 607. I don't know if it's... Um, it's on the screen as well. Um, but this, this prayer, I, I'm going to read through it uh, one time. And then as I read through it, I would invite you to just listen to the words as I read them and think about them and how it might apply to your own life. And then I would invite you to pray this prayer together if this prayer expresses your heart, if this prayer expresses where you're coming from. I haven't been to uh, ball games for a while, especially maybe high school games where uh, I know sometimes they have that cheer, you know, I have spirit, yes I do, I have spirit, how about you? And then the other side re responds. And for those folks that do that cheer, they're not saying this is the first time in my life I had spirit, it's just reaffirming. And, and so for us, when we look at this covenant communion prayer, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the very first time we're committing our lives to Christ. For some, it could be, but it's, it's an affirmation of that commitment. It's an affirmation of that decision, whether it, again, whether it's new today or whether it's been many, many years ago. Again, listen as I read, and then we'll all be invited to pray this prayer together. It's, it's really a prayer that kind of lays out maybe what it means when we say, I have decided to follow Jesus. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt, rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. When this is saying laid aside for thee, it doesn't mean like we're just being lazy. It's, it's for Christ. There's sometimes because some people who have taken a stand for Christ, maybe they will not have this promotion or have this, you know, material uh, benefit in life. But they're putting Jesus first. We're putting Jesus first in all that we do. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. In the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. The covenant prayer in the Wesleyan tradition is a way of affirming, confirming, or really deciding to follow Jesus. And if this reflects your heart, and if this, if, if this is your desire as we enter into this new year, I invite you to pray this prayer together. Let us pray. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified 
in heaven. Amen. Amen.